Hey, man, congratulations. I appreciate it. Uh, as you know, it's, it's, I'm, a, I'm humbled, and, and you know, you're, you feel great about these things because it reflects so much on the people around you. So it's an opportunity for me to talk about our coaching staff, our players, uh, and really our whole operation in Berea. Well, I mean, part of part of the reason why I believe you got this award, Coach, is um, obviously the number of wins. That, that's helpful in making the playoffs. That is also helpful. But the way that you and your staff did somehow navigate f five different starting quarterbacks, four of them in games that, you know, were, were one would say, um, uh, necessary for you to make the playoffs the last one you were arresting your team how are you able to negotiate the season with so many different changes at the most important position yeah i mean it's a it's a great word navigate because it, it felt like that uh, a bunch this season and taking twists and turns and you know you never know preseason i tell the coaches all the time we have no idea what's coming at us there's just <laughs> going to be something that's coming and a lot of times it's injuries and, and i think back to you know, week one, we lose Jack Conklin, our starting tackle. Week two, we lose Nick Chubb, you know, our, our all-world running back. And, you know, what I got from our coaches and from our players is nobody blinked. Uh, they were a bunch of problem solvers. And, and that's what I challenge the coaches week in and week out is how do we win this game? And, and when you say that, you're talking about who's available to you that week. And, uh, you know, the, the, the different quarterbacks, that, that was different. And, uh, you know, credit to our coaches and credit to those players because you have to evolve as an offense when you're going from, you know, Deshaun and some of the things you're doing with Deshaun, and obviously you go to Joe, you're, you're going to change what you do because you're trying to play to the strengths of your players. So uh, that was uh, all credit goes to that coaching staff and the players. How does, how does one uh, in your position keep the next man up mentality and the competition behind the scenes as intense as it probably needs to be and keep everyone together? How, how, do, how, does, how does one create that environment? Well, it is so cliche, Rich, next man up. Uh, we try to live it by making sure that that next man stays ready so they don't have to get ready. Uh, we look at everybody as a starter, and we have our coaches, you know, you got to develop the third guy on the depth chart because number three becomes number one pretty quickly in the NFL. So uh, it's really being intentional about developing our guys, being intentional from our player standpoint of never thinking that they're, you know, hey, this is, I'm a rookie, it's a redshirt season. That really doesn't exist in the NFL. So the mentality in our building is always to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And uh, obviously it is helpful to have, say, a defensive player of the year and comeback player of the year on your roster as well. Um, what was your perspective of watching Miles Garrett do what he did this season? Yeah, I'm a better coach with Miles Garrett on the field, <laughs> if, if you can believe it. Yes. You know, I, well, for me, I have the best seat in the house. I, I get to, uh, when we're on defense, uh, I'm watching Jim Schwartz operate, and then I'm watching Miles go to work. And I've seen it for four years uh, up close to see how he is on Sundays, and I know our fans in the NFL world have seen it. Uh, I really believe Miles took a step this past season in terms of how hard he works, how he leads this football team, was elected captain by the team, and just to see him go and how he operated. And when we needed a play, he was making a play. You know, we talked earlier about that Indianapolis game. We go to Indy, he's blocking field goals, he's getting safeties. I mean, it was incredible. It was like a, you don't often see a guy take over a game when they're a defensive player, and, and he took over games. Uh, and I can speak from an offensive coach's perspective. When you're game planning, Everything you do is trying to make sure Miles Garrett doesn't wreck the game, and he still wrecked games. And I think that's why he's more than deserving uh, to be Defensive Player of the Year. Kevin Stefanski, the now two-time NFL Coach of the Year, joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show live before the Super Bowl here in Las Vegas. Uh, what was your conversation with Joe Flacco like when you first picked up the phone and he's looking down and he's trying to figure out what that area code might be on his phone? And, <laughs> And then, he, and then we saw what happened. What was that conversation like? Well, the first thing that comes to mind with that conversation, Rich, is Joe is from South Jersey, just outside of Philly. I'm from Philly. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to Joe, I'm hearing the Philly accent. <laughs> and I felt like I was talking to a cousin or a brother or a guy I went to high school with. Uh, and then we bring him in, and same idea. Uh, just talking to him, he has that, that Audubon, New Jersey, that accent has not left him. Um, so 
and he's Joe's a Joe's a pros pro man. You know, he when we first signed him, it's, it wasn't a foregone conclusion that he was going to be our starter. He was kind of he was on our practice squad, uh, and we just felt like we needed depth there. And then, sure enough, had some injuries, and he's in there. But man, that that guy, the way he prepares, the way he is around the building in the locker room, gives his teammates such great confidence because there is an air of I've been there, I've done that, a Super Bowl winner. Uh, so it was fun, again, for me to be a part of that and just watch him operate. Uh, and then before I let you go here, Coach, you, you mentioned how you felt like uh, it sounded like you were talking to a family member um, when you were talking to Flacco. I, 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 I know your dad's name is Ed. I don't believe any of your kids are named Steve. Did you get confused when the award was announced for Steven Stefanski <laughs> uh, on Thursday night? Did that hit well, you? Well, the, the, truth, is, the truth is, Rich, my cousin Steve had a great night last night. <laughs> his, his phone, his phone was blowing up, and he called, and we called him right away. And and his words, he literally picks up the phone and he says to me, "I did it. Hard work pays off." <laughs> so wait a minute, you do have a cousin named Steve that is, Stefanski? That is amazing. You do? Oh yeah, Steve Stefanski. And Phil, you know what, Rich? I'll get That's if you awesome. want. I, I could merge Steve onto this call if you want, if we have time. Oh, you know what? I, I was told he was not available last night to, to accept. Um, but that, that had to talk about a curveball. But hey, it's all the Stefanskis won last night. You know what I mean? I love it. That's right. And, and I, I won't, whatever show that actor was promoting, I, I'm not watching it. <laughs> you're, you're not available either. Wow. Okay. <laughs> hey. You stand on principle, coach. That's why you're a two-time coach of the year. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Hey, guys, stand for something. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.